It is indeed a very proud moment and a great honor for Sardar Vallabhai Patel National Police Academy that the Honorable President of India has consented to give his valuable time to address the officer trainees of the 213 batch, the 66 RR. The Academy is privileged to have this opportunity to seek the Honorable President's valuable advice to these entrants into the Indian Police Service. As inspired by the first Home Minister of India, Sardar Vallabhai Patel, the Indian Police Service forms part of the steel framework of our country, and we at the National Police Academy, both faculty and trainees, strive together to achieve his dream. As you will agree, sir, the new age police officer has to wear many hats, ranging from legal to management expert and bomb detonator to negotiator. It is our endeavor to prepare the officer for all these requirements. For the first time, the phase two of 65 RR were taken to Singapore, where they studied strides made in coastal security, disaster management, crime investigation, traffic management, control management, control room management, which have led to development and progress. The mission statement of the Academy focuses on preparing leaders for the Indian police who will lead the force with courage, uprightness, dedication, and a strong sense of service to the nation. Our guiding principle towards ethics and integrity is to thine own self be true. Respected President, Sir, as Director of the Sardar Vallabhai Patel National Police Academy, I thank you for granting us this opportunity and for interacting with these entrants to the IPS. Your words of guidance drawn from deep knowledge and experience in public life will act as a beacon throughout their careers. May I also add, sir, that we are deeply touched by your personal touch in inviting us to visit the museum and also to have a round of the Rashtrapati Bhavan, which will remain an unforgettable experience to us. Thank you, sir. This present moment, a meeting with the first citizen of the country, is definitely the highlight of the training experience for every probationer. I, Suman D. Penekar, on behalf of the 66th batch of regular recruits to the Indian Police Service, have the honor of conveying our deep gratitude to Sri Pranab Mukherjee for graciously granting us this privileged opportunity for a personal interaction. Sir, the near year-long course of phase one of our training has been a journey both rigorous and rewarding. Nine months ago, we entered the sprawling campus of Sardar Vallabhai Patel National Police Academy, Hyderabad, doe-eyed and with the hearts of flutter at the thought of the trying 44 weeks that lay ahead. Now, after countless early morning PTs that inculcated in us the value of endurance in the face of adversity, innumerable indoor sessions on subjects such as law, criminology, and forensic science that enriched our intellect, and varied outdoor activities like horse riding, swimming, weapon training, and firing that accentuated our personalities, as well as the engaging attachments with ITBP Masuri, CSWT Indoor, and Greyhounds, we now stand at the cusp of completing the training with a determined heart and a steely eye fixed on the onerous responsibilities we must shoulder in the district. Sir, this glorious heritage that we inherit on our shoulders represents a saga of valor coupled with compassion, of pride coupled with service, and above all, sacrifice coupled with duty. We are fortunate to have entered not a career, but a way of life that is inspired by these great values. Sir, in conclusion, I will say that NPA has been the window through which we have seen India herself and obtained a perspective of tremendous challenge we face. And on behalf of this illustrious institution and 66 batch of IPS, we thank you warmly for blessing the start of our journey. Thank you, sir. At the very outset, I would like to welcome you to this historic Darbar Hall, which has witnessed many important events in our contemporary history. This is the hall where Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru was sworn in 
as the first Prime Minister of India by Lord Mountbatten. This is the hall which witnessed the Declaration of Republic and the swearing in by Dr. Rajendra Prasad, the first President of Indian Republic. Dear officer trainees, when I am addressing you, I would like to congratulate you, especially the Indian officer trainees, for completing a very difficult examination and the success in this most competitive and difficult examination speaks of your academic excellence. I congratulate you. I am told the group has various elements and ingredients of different academic background which will no doubt help you in your professional career. You have entered into a service which has its role practically from the beginning of civilized modern state and administration. Even in the ancient days, the role of authorities to maintain law, order, ensure peace and security were considered to be the most important activity of the state. In fact, the very creation of this social organization, the state is meant for establishing order in a prevailing disorderly situation and to ensure peace, security of the society for a longer period of time. Of course, there has been evolution with the evolution of the social forces, social structures. In India also, the police had different roles at different points of times under different administrative setup. Till 1935, it was not only recruited centrally by the government of India, but police as a subject was the central subject in the Act of 1905, in the Act of 1919, all these are constitutional acts. Only in 1935, Government of India Act, police as a subject was transferred to the provincial governments. At one point of time during the British days, police personnel were recruited and they were on a highly selective and difficult examination. And these day, and those days they were called Imperial Polish. And they were put in service almost over the entire empire of the British government. There was a debate and the academy, which bears the name of Sardar Vallabhai Patel, is primarily responsible for not only keeping the Indian police service, but the All India services. Because at that point of time, there was a strong debate whether an instrument created by the colonial masters to serve their colonial interests could subserve the interests and fulfill the aspirations of a newly liberated vast multitude of population which is called India. It was further Patil's steadfast support 
and strong argument added by his strong personality who could say that it is only bad workman who quarrels with his tools. A good workman utilizes his tools. Therefore, I cannot be a bad workman. I must utilize the tools which I am going to have. And perhaps his observation was prophetic, because in the subsequent years we have seen the same instrument, the same tool, which served the interests of the colonial masters, could completely rededicate themselves for the nation-making. They constructed dams, they managed power plants, they implemented developmental plans and signed in the five-year plan documents, they gave the correct advice to their political masters. And in that process, the work culture was built up, which is able to handle a vast multitude of people, 1.25 billion. Even for Sardar Vallabh by Patel or Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, with due respect to them, they had to handle only 350 to 400 million people, not 1.25 billion people. The magnitude and enormity of the administrative responsibility could easily be understood from there. As Indian Police Service personnel, Whenever there is a problem, there is a saying, of course jokingly, that when a man is in danger, he forgets to call his father, but he immediately remembers to call a police, because he knows that police is to protect him. That much dependence is on this institution. Therefore, it is the sacred responsibility of the institution as a whole and as important members of the institution to keep that trust. Whole society trusts it. Therefore, you are to be accountable to that trust which the society imposes on you, not to your immediate boss or your individuals. Of course, discipline would be there, that is the most important ingredient of police forces. But if you maintain that, I'm sure you will serve the nation. I wish you all success. Young ladies and gentlemen, I'm glad that a large number of women are competing and competing very successfully and joining the services. Shortly, the services will be enriched by their presence and contribution. I welcome it. I welcome the officers' trainees from Royal Bhutan Government, Government of Nepal and Maldives, and I wish you have been benefited by your presence and training here, and shortly after going back in your countries. You will use this knowledge which you have acquired, expertise which you have gained for the better services to your people. I wish you all success. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.